So, David, I've got a, um, a little treat here. This one is um, the lavender color or something. But it's really nice cut. It's got a little hemp seed oil on it. Sorry. Anyway, just got these in today, a couple of them. Um, and I, I got a few others. Let's see. I think here's one. Now this is the light version. And this one's got the, uh, the coating on the top. Now, I'm not real fond of coatings on the top. Uh, I like them on the back better. And, whoops, wrong one. There's one without all the hemp seed oil. Nice, huh? And here it is. I think I got it. Uh, and this one stays in its package to keep the hemp seed oil off of it. But it's got the, the shiny stuff on the back, and it's a full mirror. Um, when we sputter stuff onto, uh, like, rubies, uh, to make ruby lasers, that's what we do. We, we silver it so that it's uh, reflective, uh, and a partial reflective, so that uh, the light can go inside and start bouncing around. Well, this gets um, reflected off of here, and I can make it laze right there. Um, but anyway, this is yours. And I will be sending it along, um, you know, I think my wife is uh, going downtown again this week. Um, so I'll try to get it off by, you know, tomorrow or the next day. It's a beauty, man. <laughs> it's a real beauty, brother. Yeah, you know, these are paperweights, man. You're not going to get rich on my diamonds. Um, and De Beers denies that they are diamonds because they don't know about the most scale of hardness or something. And certainly none of the gemologists they train know anything about diamonds either because uh, um, they get five whole hours of classes to learn the science behind gemstones. And they operate machines that they don't know what they do, and they, they have measurements that they don't know what they mean, but they will argue with me, not because they know anything about science, but because they're worried about the value of their own investments, including five hours of classes, man, that cost, you know, a lot of money. And um, they can see their um, livelihood slipping away if I'm giving away <laughs> diamonds like this. Right? And I do, actually. These are actually going into a space-based laser. And um, the planes of cleavage follow this uh, angle here, the pavilion, and... I can make it come out and make a, a big, big, big laser beam come out a little tiny point right there. Um, or I can make a larger lens across there or um, and, and focus it through, uh, through another sphere. Diamonds emit uh, electrons, not just light. Um, because of the carbon-14 in there, and it, uh, it's radioactive, um, sort of. It is. It's a beta emitter. It emits electrons, like old-fashioned television sets, but uh, does so at the speed of light because it's from a neutron fissioning and giving off the mass of an electron. So it comes off of the diamond at light speed, hits my ceiling, and I can... Uh, I get all kinds of cool patterns on my ceiling from these guys um, that just light the whole place up because they, they're, they're giving off more than they take in. It's like a light amplification.
process, and there it is. It's really, truly Starfire Diamond. So, when you have a diamond to test with, and uh, you know, they, they form in the cubic hexagonal system. Uh, it's face-centered, cubic hexagonal. So, we're looking up inside of there, and you can see six lines um, because the, the crystal has six sides on that way, but real diamond crystals, and this one's been cleaned up to make it look like a hexagonal crystal. And hexagonal crystals are even axes like this with uh, one long axis, two even axes, one long axis. Most uh, this was not like that to begin with. Um, but what you see is um, a yellow stone. Let me see if I can turn my light off there. It's a yellow stone. There's no blue stuff in there. Hmm? The blue is the um, beta emissions, <laughs> and that's, that's the, the um, electrons coming off of the carbon-14. And like if I uh, if I shine the light down on my pants, all you get is yellow light. The blue light is coming this way. It's not going that way. So it's not transmitted light. It's um, it's uh, stimulated emissions by light emitting diodes by lasers, um, and that's. You can take a, a blue, green, or red laser in this, and it'll turn blue, red, or green. Because it's not really yellow either. The, the, um, the planes of cleavage caused by the size of the unit cell um, are half the size of that particular shade of yellow. So... And, and you have one of these. And now you know kind of how it works. It, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful stone. And the planes of cleavage in this case are heading that away. Um, and you can see them here on the side. That's why, why it's got lines like that. Um, and that happens because carbon atoms are all the same size, so they line up in perfect little rows and columns. Um, and it's 10 on the most scale of hardness. So if I go like this, bum, 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 nothing happens. Because, uh ooh, let's get a piece of glue on it. Um, anyway. Nothing happens because diamonds are uh, like 10,000 times harder than a ruby. Ha <laughs> ha, wow, huh? I mean, and you can take this and scratch the surface the same way uh, with a known diamond. That's why I sent that diamond ring along so you could, uh, you know, scratch other diamonds and, and not worry about it coming unglued. If, you, if that one comes unglued, I'll send you another. I've got a bunch of them. Um, and so you can take off the coating. I can can take, you know, like a little Dremel type tool with a, a polishing compound on it and it just comes right off. Um, it's not a permanent feature, but I kind of like them, you know what I mean? I, I, <laughs> for a paperweight, it's a really nice thing. And that's what they are, they're paperweights. They're to make our lives a little brighter, a little sparklier, and a little more fun, you know, because, <laughs> yeah, man, that's a real diamond, because <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. And only diamonds can do this kind of stuff because they're so reflective and the, the, um, the, the mm, 
the way they bend light is the strongest there is. Um, and that's because they're so very, very dense because they form, these do, like 10 kilometers deep, maybe even more. Um, and the tremendous heat eliminates everything else. There, there's nothing else solid at 3,800 degrees Celsius. Um, silicon begins, reaches its vapor point um, and moves in with carbon and we find silicon carbide uh, along with diamond in fault lines. Um, fault lines are 50 kilometers deeper than the deepest kimberlite. Um, and the diamonds form in every fault line in the world. Um, rivers, creeks, dry washes are fault lines. There are other fault lines, but those, the ones you can walk out and see at a creek or a river are just as good and uh, you can find the same stuff. They are the low points in the ground. So AUPT collects there and um, AUPT is full of diamonds, little tiny ones usually, because uh, they blow out of um, volcanoes, right? They go up into the stratosphere and they cruise around and then they fall down and they fall and collect in the low spots on the ground. They follow places where water flows naturally. Um, but in fault lines like rivers and creeks, the, the, mm, the river rocks are mostly AUPT, sometimes some aluminum oxide, and sometimes industrial diamond. Um, they're not um, bright and shiny and clear like this. They're a um, little different. I've got silicon carbide and diamond in several locations. Um, and what I used to call opal out here, my blue opal, turns out to be um, melted platinum. Melted platinum. And I know that because I do the tests. I didn't read it in a book because what I read in the book was wrong. When I started testing things, that's how I learned that. I, I, I used those books all of my life and I was telling people things that were wrong. My friend um, P. Michael Hutchins of MIT um, worked with me uh, on, on my chemistry, on the formation of precious opal. And we ended up with the, with the gel in my jar um, that I said, hey, we're successful, even though it doesn't have a play of color. Um, and he was pretty disappointed. He thought, you know, I should have a play of color. Um, if it was an opal, and he says, you know, it could be anything. And I thought, well, you know, it's, I got my chemistry from the book, right? Volcanic ash is supposed to be um, really tiny crystals of felspar. Felspar is six on the Mohs scale of hardness. Um, and my AUPT dust is 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness and has a melting point of 1768 degrees Celsius, exactly like platinum. And it looks, when you look at it closely, like ooh, gold and platinum. And this is um, some older stuff, and if I develop the pictures of the video, it doesn't take as good a color. Um, but this is AUPT dust. And I can melt that into um, a stuff that looks like uh, gold and platinum mixed together because that's what it is.
it looks silvery in one direction and gold in the other um, and changes as you move around it and what you see in here closer and closer is a cubic structure within the uh, within the fine fine dust right i screen this down to 300 microns and you can see those bright things those are diamonds <laughs> i try to get rid of them man pesky little fuckers <laughs> and and they're they're really small man uh, they they get just as small as the dust one of the things that does is um my light just went out one of the things that does, of course, is uh, um, it, they act as a heat sink. Um, so they don't melt at, at 1768. They melt at 3800 degrees Celsius. And uh, I, I have a hard time getting to 1768. Um, it's not easy. And there you kind of see the gold color. Isn't that beautiful, huh? And it, uh, I'll, I'll send you some good pictures of the stuff when I melt it. But this right here, this is just the molecular AUPT. The little tiny pieces and, and those uh, unit cells of a crystal. That's what this, these are. They're just little tiny unit cells of AUPT. It's like a 13 or a 21 atom unit cell that makes um, octagons, cubes, with hoppers. Cubes with hoppers. That's because they're face-centered. So there's like a one down there in the middle and then some around the outside, four around that side and four on the other side, and three around the top and three around the bottom. Actually, they, they say it's six, but it, it's like six in a box shape. They're, they're not going in an orbit like planets around the sun. They're going in a 360 degree all the way around the sphere type thing. Um, but it's more put together more like a, like a box. So there's... Um, There's a, a, a six-sided feature to it, and, and each side is connected to another one next door. And, and even in this dust, it forms really cubic crystals because AU and PT are one proton different, proton and electron different. Um, so that charge creates a slight magnetic field. And this is everywhere, 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 and anybody can go out and get it as much as they want anywhere on Earth. And it's stronger than steel, it's easier to find, and we don't have to tear up the planet to get it, um, because it's the dust on the ground. It's the dust in dirt roads. This, is, this came from the dirt road at my location in Safford. I can get the same stuff out here on a dirt road down the street from my house. Um, I get the same thing out of the Gila River. You can get it anywhere, David. Because the KT extinction event blew this stuff out of volcanoes all around the Earth for 5,000 years. Twice. So, you know the Grand Canyon? That's what it is. Layer after layer of volcanic ash that settles, you know, because it gets rained on and stuff, and, and uh, but it, it erodes away really fast. So that's not millions and billions of years of history there. It's, it's a few years of history with some volcanic ash. And... Um, I don't think that, David. I know that. I went out and looked. And that's the difference between reading it in a book and accepting what you read and actually, you know, finding out what the stuff is. <laughs>